So far we've added in our character which has an idle animation on it and we've got some other animations ready to go for having the character walk around. First of all, before we can even get to that, we need to get some input controls so that you can move the player using the keys. So the up and down and left and right arrow keys or the WASD keys or, or whatever you like. Now we're going to use the new Unity input system. So in the past, we've done things like using that get axis, but there's a new Unity input system as of the versions of 2020. And I want to show you how you use that instead, because it's going to sort of become the replacement as you move forward. You'll need to go to Window, Package Manager, and then you want to make sure over here, now I've already done this, so mine's looking as it should. Go to the Unity Registry up here in Packages, type in Input to search for it, and you're going to find that you get this input system here. Now it very helpfully comes with a whole bunch of different samples if you want them, but you won't need them right now. Okay, so once you've found that, just click install. So I've already got it installed, so I can't see the button. Now once it does install, what it's going to do is say that it's going to switch from the old method of like the get access stuff over to the new input system, and Unity is going to want to restart itself. You have to let it do that. It will also allow you to save stuff before you go forward as well. So you're not going to lose any work. So it's just going to shut down and then open back up with the input system in place, ready to go. Okay. Once you've done that, you'll be ready to follow me. So let's click on our character and we're going to add our player controller. So add component, look down the list for player input. This is in the new input system. So just select that. And now we've got this um, actions that we want to populate with some new action sets. We haven't created one of these before. Okay, now the action sets are the things that associate your input devices with what actions are going to be taken. And there's a default one that you can use. So click on create actions. Now, once you've done that, it's going to want to save it. Now I'm put it inside of my Eve folder here and let's call it uh, something like player actions. Save that. Okay, you're going to get this icon here that comes up that will be your player actions, which you can drag and drop into that actions place for that player input. Let's open this up and have a look how it's structured. Okay, so there's two lots of different actions that you can set up and you can have more, but by default, you've got the player's actions. So that's like you as the human pressing keys and joysticks and moving the mouse around. And then you've also got these UI actions, uh, which is for interacting with the user interface. In this case, we're just concentrating on the player actions. Now you'll see, by default again, that you've got three different types of actions. You've got move already defined. And if you drop that down, you'll see that it allows for um, game pads, XR controllers or joysticks, but also WASD. If we just drop that down, here are our keyboard strokes. Okay, so we have our up and down, left and right arrow keys, and we also have our WASD keys, which are, you know, pretty much the things that we use to move our characters around. These are the ones we're concentrating on right now. Now, the move is going to send back to our code a vector to value. Now, you can change that in here to get different values. But if you think about the old get axis system where we had get axis for horizontal movement and get axis for vertical movement, we basically had two values. Okay, we had an X and a Y value for the movement. So the X value would be modified using the side arrow keys or the A and D keys. And then the Y value would be modified with the up and down arrow keys and the W and E. S. Okay, so that's going to get a vector three. And this is all very well and good. But how do we now get this back into our code? Well, I'm going to show you. So we've got this, we're just using the default. That's all we need right now. I'm going to save that, 
click back on Eve. Okay, now we're going to also change a few things before we put our code in. So we're going to change our default scheme to be the keyboard and mouse because that's what we're using. And then in behavior, we're going to set up this to invoke Unity events. Once you've changed that, it will then give you this list here where you can populate it with the events, but we're about to write those, so we can't do that now. So let's write our first script. So right click, create C sharp, and let's call this our player controller code. Then we're going to open that up. The first thing we need to interact with our input system is to add the library in. So using Unity Engine dot input system. Now these are Unity events that are going to be called from the input system and we're actually declaring them in here. Now to start with we're all about just moving our character around. Okay so we want a public void on move and this is going to be the one that gets called. So this is the event and it's going to be passed an input action dot callback context context and it's that context that will have the vector to value inside of it so the same as the horizontal and vertical movement we used to get so in here we're going to actually assign that context of that vector to to a variable that we can use elsewhere for moving our character so up the top I'm going to create a vector to call it move direction and then inside of here, we'll put move direction equals context dot read value vector to like that. Next, we're going to create a method to actually move the character. So void move and it's going to accept a vector to of direction. And then once we've got that, we're just going to really simply move our character with transform dot translate and the X movement value, nothing in the Y and then our Z movement value. Okay, now you're probably saying that's not right. Uh, and <laughs> No, it's not. This here is how much in the X direction we want to move our character, which would basically be from side to side. And this is our forward and backwards value here. Now, somewhere in our direction vector are these values. It's a vector two, it's coming from here. So we're actually going to call this move down in update. So we'll put move and inside of here, we will just add move direction. Okay, so that's going to link everything up. Now as a challenge though for you, I want you to actually write what the proper code is that has to go in here. Obviously getting your values out of your vector two direction. So pause the video now, go off and do that. When we come back, I'll show you how it's done. Welcome back. How did you go? Well, Direction is a vector too. Therefore, it's going to have movements for our X and Z directions. So in here, I'm going to put direction dot X. And then the Z value isn't actually a Z because it's a bit of a trick question, really, because a vector two only has an X and a Y value in it. But in this case, we're using the vector two's Y value as our Z value. So direction dot Y in there to move the character around. How did you go? Did you get something along these lines? Now at this point, it's going to give you the raw data coming through into here and your character is probably going to move quite slowly or extremely quickly. Uh, these values are going to be quite small, They're usually between like negative one and one. And you will want to control your character's movement, at least initially now with some kind of a speed. So we'll put a float move speed equals two up here. And I might actually just make that public because it'll come in handy a little later. Let's now multiply this by move speed and the direction by move 
speed. And of course, because this is getting called from inside of our update, we need to kind of normalize it with time dot delta time to make sure that it's consistent between each update loop. So let's just take a copy of that and put that in there. Great. Okay, save it. Let's switch back to Unity and we'll select Eve. We have to hook up our script with our player input. So we're going to attach our player controller script onto there. And then this events, you want to drop down. We're going into the player and you'll see that there's a move, a look and a fire. Now, where do they come from? Well, if you remember your player actions, they're here, move, look and fire. Okay, so if you add more in here, you will see more in that events list and then you can hook them up to other methods. So the players move, we're going to add to that. It's going to be the code that's already on Eve. So drag and drop Eve's prefab into here. Then the function you're looking for is in the code you just wrote in player controller. And if I just bring this across a little bit so you can see it, player controller, and then we've got our on move method that we just wrote there. So that's going to hook everything up for us. So let's press play. Our character will go into idle, but the arrow keys will actually move her around. And yes, she's not animated. And yes, I did say we were going to use her animations to actually move her around rather than hard coding in like we've just done. But the point with this is we now have hooked up our input system and we know it's all working and therefore we can go ahead and apply that to the animations.